So, Lucy, thanks for agreeing to take part in this interview. When did you first find out that you were on the autistic spectrum? When I was uh, 19, I was actually diagnosed. Um, I, ha I had an assessment and I was diagnosed. And then that, that came about because my mum, who always knew that something wasn't quite right since I was about six months, she noticed. Um, she met uh, through family, she, uh, family friends, she met somebody who had a son who'd recently been diagnosed with Asperger's. And, uh, and she was speaking to this woman about it and realised that a lot of the things were the same as similar to me. And the, the mother said, well, I'll speak to the psychologist and mention your daughter. And so um, she mentioned some of the things my mum had told her and the psychologist said, well, I, I would advise her to go and try and get her assessed. Could you just describe what the diagnostic process was for you? I went to an assessment centre and it was a day's assessment and um, I think the first half was I, I went upstairs and did a load of tests but I can never remember what you call them they were practical a lot of practical tests and verbal tests and my parents sat downstairs and talked about stuff like my uh, my birth my childhood what my parents had noticed as I was growing up and while I was doing the tests and then um, we went away for a few hours a couple of hours came back and then they had a chat to us about what you know the the evidence from the tests and from what my parents were saying about me and put it together and basically said you know all this does point to you know being on the higher end of of the spectrum you know as they called it at the time was I was high functioning Asperger's yeah so did you actually find out on the on the day yeah. for sure? Yeah, on the day. Yeah. So I, I had to wait about two weeks for the test results. Yeah. This was a very relaxed day. It was yeah. it was, you know, really comfortable and, and it was with Lorna Wing and Juliet Juliet Gould or Julia Gould. You went with the top people. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> but what was it that led up to you finding out that you had autism? I'd uh, my, my parents had noticed and my mum had noticed that something wasn't right with me from a young age and from she says from about six months she noticed a difference and then in comparing me to my siblings realised that I was finding things more difficult like routines and, and processing information and um, also anxiousness and things like that. So she, she knew there was something not right and then um, it wasn't till later when I was a teenager she through someone my dad knew, um, their son had just been recently diagnosed with uh, on the autistic spectrum with Asperger's and um, after depression actually. And uh, he, my mum and dad were speaking to them. My mum mentioned about me because a lot of what his parents were saying just sounded very familiar to my mum. So she, the the mother of this guy said she'd speak to the psychologist about me. I mentioned it to the psychologist and she did and she came back to my mum and said well he the psychologist thinks that you really ought to go and have her uh, assessed and that is it sounds really probable that I was on the autistic spectrum. What did um, the experts think um, your emotional difficulties um, were about before your diagnosis? When I was depressed as a teenager I'd seen counsellors and a, a psychiatrist and I think the counsellors just thought I was de depressed and, and the psychiatrist uh, thought that I was just going through rough teenage patch, I was having teenage problems and uh, even when I tried to explain to her that I'd felt similar, this, this feeling of not fitting in and, and feeling different all my life, she, she wouldn't accept it and said no, 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 I'm sure this is just a passing phase you're going through now and, and refused to accept it. And, and we had we had what some wider family members who thought that my behaviour or the way I was was because I was acting spoilt or just a difficult but, child. Can you tell me a bit about how things were for you growing up? Were you displaying any sort of typical autistic symptoms? Um, well, according to what my mum's told me, she she noticed things from when I was very young. Yeah. And um, but for 
I know she said I used to wave my arms around a lot and I was very anxious and also she said she often thought you know people thought I was being naughty but often she realized that actually I wasn't really taking in sometimes of things she was saying you know and I wasn't she didn't think she really felt she had an instinct that I wasn't being naughty that it was just I wasn't really getting it you know and like yeah. things like uh, she noticed more when my brother or sister because uh, they're younger than me grew up that she suddenly could had something to compare me someone else to compare me to that she noticed that I wasn't getting things like routines very well like you know um, you know getting up in the morning doing routine um, you know remembering to get what things to put on first you know what to do first when I got up in the morning so yeah. she used to make me um, charts with pictures on yeah, and, and instructions on what to do so so there'd be a morning routine and a bedtime routine and so even though she didn't know what was wrong with me she realized that she she had an instinct that that would help me yeah. and she also did it for my brother and sister so I wouldn't feel left out yeah I think she realized that 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 I would verbal instructions weren't really going in and staying in yeah, so so giving yeah. me pictures but also there were other things like um, you know I felt different I remember always saying things to my mum like you know I don't feel right I feel like I'm I'm not of this world think strange things like that you know I'm, and and I'd, I'd be constantly philosophizing about being me and you know who am I and yeah. and I just didn't feel quite right with things and I remember feeling very anxious in a lot of situations and I think as I grew up I started to realize that other people didn't feel like me as I was getting older you know I mean at school you know I, I, I really wanted to be like everybody else yeah. and so I, I'm a very good mimic so I'd be very good at copying my friends and so that I and I was never without friends but as I started to get older I started to feel more different and, and I did start to get bullied when I moved to schools and that continued all through the rest of my schooling from about I think I was about nine or ten and then it continued I was always bullied after that but I was never without friends during that time either you, you spoke earlier about feeling as if you were an alien sort of yeah. from from another planet yeah. could, could you tell me a bit about that even as I can I can still remember it as a child feeling like I'm di you know something's I feel like an alien I feel like I don't fit in I I remember thinking am I adopted um, I used to feel like I was somebody looking out like I wasn't actually in my own body like I was looking out two eyes and and I didn't feel quite real like I was actually here I kept, I kept thinking you know maybe some you know I knew it was silly but I kept thinking you know maybe I'm an alien and, and someone's gonna come and get me soon because I don't feel right I just didn't I don't know what it was I just didn't feel right that I fitted in but I couldn't necessarily I did express it I my mum remembers me saying it but I couldn't really explain what it was and it, it felt horrible it felt really horrible I, I, you know I'd often feel quite scared about it I hated, I really hated school, so when I was, I think I went into the lower sixth and then about a month into the lower sixth I'd had enough and I left. Okay. And then uh, I, I still had friends and I kept up with some friends and then I went, ended up going to college for a few months, dropped out of that. I think I was finding, I was starting to get more and more depressed and I couldn't cope with anything really. I did get a job in the end and I had friends, I'd go out to the pub, I'd, I'd just do what everybody else did at my age, go to nightclubs and you know I did I did enjoy it but there was always part of me that wasn't that comfortable yeah. you know and, and I, I think more and more I was getting more and more depressed but I was trying to put it off and I I think I started when I worked in a pub I actually started drinking a lot more and I think that was to, right. to, to cover up how I was feeling. Around those teenage years is when girls and boys start um, to get interested in each other. Yeah. So how did the relationship thing go for you when you were a teenager? I find it all a little bit confusing, but, you know, basically I did what all my friends were doing as they just, you know, we'd meet boys and things, we'd go out with them, we'd, you know, I, had, I actually had a lot of male friends who, who were just good friends as well. And, um, you know, I want to be like everybody else, you know, have a relationship, be with, be with people. But I think the problem for me was because I had such low self-esteem, really, and I was very down, is that I would probably go out with anybody at one point, and which was really bad because there were some people who were just, 
not very good for me and not very nice and, and you know basically didn't like me for me and were uh, taking advantage of me so I probably fell in and out of a few relationships that weren't very good they never lasted very long <laughs> but um, because they weren't they weren't people who wanted a, a serious relationship to be honest and and I think that made me more if I think about it now looking back it made me more depressed about myself and I kept thinking what's wrong with me you know why do these people you know they, they don't they don't want to continue going out with me after a little while and, and, and I felt more depressed about myself, I think. Were there problems <coughs> specific to being an Asperger's girl that made it more difficult for you to be in a relationship with a boy? Yeah, I'm not sure about that because I don't know. All I know f is from my own experience and I can't really say whether I did anything different to anybody else, how they would behave in a relationship. I'd find it... I think I found it un I, sometimes uncomfortable being on my own with somebody, but I don't, to be honest, I'm not sure if I did anything different or not to anybody else, whether. It's hard to tell, isn't it? It is hard to tell because I can't, I don't know other people. I, I don't really know if I did anything different. From what I know, I know I, I wasn't any different to anybody else within a relationship, but then my relationships weren't, to be honest, my early relationships weren't really long-term relationships anyway. So they were, they were over very quick because, you know, I think I'd realised that, you know, these weren't very, very caring, nice people that I was going out with. And in fact, and maybe that's it. I was picking, I was going out with anybody because I wanted to feel liked. And I think that was my problem. I was hanging out with the wrong people because I was so desperate to be accepted and liked. So probably in that way, you know, that was different to everybody else. Maybe they, they were more confident and wouldn't have gone out with those people. Yeah. So maybe that was it. But that, made, that did make it worse for me. Do you think there's a difference in the way autism um, stroke Asperger's affects girls from boys? Yes, I do. I don't want to generalise because I'm sure that there are exceptions, but I think that boys that I've met on the autistic spectrum and girls, there is, from what I've noticed, there is a difference. And, and with me, is that, I don't know, I think girls are more likely to care more about what others think about them as in that they really they really want to be like uh, liked and to be part of a group of other girls they want to be the same as everybody else and and they care if they appear different they care that you know somebody's looking at them strangely or or says you're weird which can happen and and or you're bullied but i you know i i I've noticed that from some boys that I've met, some of them have said, you know, they were happy being alone or they were happy being on their own. Why do you think there's so many less females diagnosed with autism? I think because we're very good at hiding, hiding it in public. I think we are very good at trying, partly because of we want to, is to fit in and, and to be like everybody else. And we, we don't want to appear different or strange, you know. So we're, we're more like to cover up in public a lot of, of the way we feel and the way we behave and um, so probably less likely to be diagnosed and, and also because we might come across as being very together, we might have jobs, might have families with children and, and I've met a lady who was in her 40s who had three children and had had a career and she wasn't diagnosed till her late 30s but, but she always just thought she was depressed and um, and just found things difficult, but she coped. She just coped because she, she wanted, she wanted a life. She, she had to. As, as someone with Asperger's syndrome, yeah. what are the main challenges you face? You know? Yeah, I, I think processing information thing is a big thing with me. You know, I can, I still have terrible problems if I'm given instructions verbally, and I, I forget so quickly, forget what what I've been told to do or I'll start doing something and then halfway through the process I'll think what do I do next and I get a bit confused about things things I have to do next I'm very I would say I'm very absent-minded I mean you say this to some people and they say well everybody feels like that but I suppose it happens to me every day and it's like a constant struggle to do things sometimes you know and I I still I still I feel exhausted every day if I go to work you know trying to I suppose it is subconscious now being like everybody else doing my job and everything else I'm not necessarily thinking about doing it now it, it, it's it's automatic 
but it's only when I come home and I feel mentally drained I realise how much effort I've put into the day you know talking to people you know speaking on the phone you know um, you know in stressful situations I've got to stay and appear calm so I can do it but it just takes a lot out of me and I often come home and feel very stressed and very wound up you know and I think that's how it affects me now and I still I suffered from agoraphobia for years during the depression and I still now find it you know I do it I go out and I, I can I, I can talk to people and go out, but I, I still find it terrible. I'm a- anxious, I would say, a lot of the time. So I'm constantly anxious. Do you feel like having Asperger's has held you back in your career? Yes, definitely. I mean, because I was never, I never felt confident um, that I was good at anything, to be honest, even though, you know, I was classed as intelligent at school and I, I did well at school, but you know, when it came to things like exams, I would always find that so hard because my memory, I, my memory was so bad. I'd do well in coursework and, and be really good at things. As soon as I got into an exam, I'd fall down and, and not be able to, you know, I passed GCSEs, but if it came to anything else, I, I found it really hard. And because also suffering depression for so many years when I didn't even know I was depressed, I couldn't cope with uh, higher education and things like that. And, and then going into jobs, you know, I never thought I was good at anything. After my diagnosis, I felt really elated mm. and relieved mm. and celebrated mm. by having a happy meal. <laughs> um, I've, after many years of wondering what the problem was with me, mm. like, to finally find out um, was just a great relief. Mm. And it was the, almost the beginning, it was almost, it was almost day one of a healing process for me looking back if that was beginning of a healing process for you yeah absolutely now looking back I can see you know how what what a great benefit it was being diagnosed I I think at the time because I was so already feeling very depressed and and insecure and and low self-esteem that at the time I couldn't see what benefit it could be because you know I couldn't see past that and all I saw was gloom ahead really but looking back now, I, it's taken me a long time, actually, to, I think, to come to terms with it, really. It was, you know, I almost felt, you know, I think my mum was happy, but she often said it was like being bereaved. She said even after the diagnosis, although she seemed happy, she, she felt like it was a bereavement, you know. It, it, not in a bad way, but that, you know, that, you know, I was, you know, now she knew what it was, that, you know... It was, it was hard to find out your child has a diagnosis of autism. And I think in a way I, I felt a bit like that. And, 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 and it wasn't till, it's not till now I can look back and say, actually, seeing where I, where I was and where I've gone from, that was the start of my new life. Although I had a breakdown afterwards, it was the start of, of a new life. Do you think it's common for people on the autistic spectrum to have mental health problems? Yeah, from what, I mean, from what I've seen, yes, it's absolutely, in fact, you know, there are probably, I would think there are lots of people on the autistic spectrum who haven't had any, you know, mental health problems necessarily diagnosed, but I think most, most people, probably, most of them probably do suffer or have suffered at one time with, with some form of mental health problem. Yeah, I think it's very common. Do you have any advice for parents that think their daughter may have autistic spectrum disorder? I would say, you know, find out as much as you can about... Uh, about autism and if you think that your daughter has an autistic spectrum disorder I would say you know go and get help as soon as possible because um, you know you don't want it to continue through school because I think it's all right when they're little but as they go through school they you know they although other children aren't necessarily being nasty they pick up on differences very quickly and that and then that that will all add to a feeling of low self-esteem and also if your daughter has got an autistic spectrum disorder she's probably already displaying or feeling anxious and that will only compound itself as she gets older and especially into becoming a teenager in puberty because those feelings will only only increase and get worse so I think that the earlier that they can you can get some support and 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 help the better really.